is Celia Buchanan. I want to welcome you to the Royal Talon's contribution to NYSADA 2020 virtual conference. I think it's an understatement to say that 2020 has been a difficult year for, for everyone and probably most of all for the thousands of educators who've had to navigate new and unfamiliar technology and teaching methods in order to continue the education of your students. So on behalf of Royal Talons, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for your dedication, your sacrifice and your perseverance, creativity and ingenuity. In the absence of being able to congregate together, I felt that the best way that we could contribute to uh, the conference was to provide video lesson plans. These plans are available also as PDFs which can be downloaded and used either in the classroom or online. I just want to take a few moments to tell you a little bit about who Royal Talons are and to talk about our mission. In 1899, Martin Talons founded the Dutch factory for paint, lacquers and inks in the city of Apeldoorn, which is situated in the centre of the Netherlands. Initially, it produced ink and often supplies. Around this time they started to make Rembrandt oils and watercolours. They became quite popular and in 1912 Talons set up a sales office in New Jersey. Talons has operated in the USA for over 100 years. In 1920 the company took a technological leap and introduced steam into its manufacturing plant. 1924 saw the introduction of the very popular Rembrandt soft pastel. 1927, the new office building was added to the factory. It is listed as a historic building and is on the Dutch Historic Buildings Council list. During the war, there was great shortages of materials. However, after World War II ended, the company continued to grow and in 1949 acquired the royal designation by Queen Wilhelmina and carries that honour to this day. The 1950s and 60s continued to see strong growth and the Van Gogh brand was introduced in 1963. In the 1970s, Royal Talons was among the pioneering companies to develop modern acrylics under the Rembrandt name. The year following its 75th anniversary, the very popular Amsterdam acrylic brand was introduced in 1976. Royal Talons became part of the Sakura Colour Products Corporation in 1991. With its headquarters in Osaka, Japan, Sakura has over 1,500 staff worldwide and is still privately owned. In 2015, Royal Talons North America was established. This is the US subsidiary for the Royal Talons brand. After 121 years of creativity and ingenuity within the creative colour industry, Royal Talons continues to innovate and create new tools for artists around the world. The vision of Royal Talons. We believe creative expression brings out the best in everyone. It has the power to stimulate mind, body and soul and should therefore be enabled all over the world. As the preferred supplier in the creative colour industry, we are dedicated to make this happen. The mission of Royal Talents. We want to enable creative expression for everyone. We do this by stimulating and facilitating as many people as possible, regardless of their level of experience, age or country of origin. Amsterdam Standard is a medium viscosity, 100% acrylic emulsion and high grade pigments. It has excellent adhesion on most surfaces and with excellent light fastness. There's a wide range of opacities, including 17 speciality metallic, pearl and reflex colours. You will need a plate to print from. For this video, a gel plate has been used. This is a clear, flexible plate with a smooth surface that lends itself to fine detail. A piece of vinyl or plexiglass can be substituted in the absence of a gel plate. A brayer will also be required to roll out the ink. Mono printing with a gel plate is a very versatile medium. Combine that with Royal Talons Amsterdam acrylics and really anything is possible. Just apply a small amount of several colours onto the plate. Amsterdam acrylics comes in a variety of different colours. It's very affordable and it's highly pigmented. I like to spread the colour around the plate and then brayer 
the colour smoothly onto the plate so that it's a nice thin layer. You can take some bubble wrap or some other material that will give you a texture and while the paint is still wet, press it into the, into the plate. The plates are soft and can take um, great detail from uh, quite fine soft objects. Just be careful not to use anything that has a sharp edge on it or you will cut or damage the plate. As you can see, you can see the bubble wrap has picked up here. Now the paint is still wet at this point. I'm going to use Ecoline print paper. This is a great paper for monoprinting. Just place it straight down onto the wet plate, which is lying face up. And then apply pressure using either the palm or the heel of your hand. And when you peel the paper back, this will really reveal the, um, the print. As you can see, it's picked up the bubble wrap there. I'm going to now take a contrasting colour or, or a darker shade, something that's going to show up, and do the same thing. I'm rolling out a thin layer of the paint. And while that's still wet, I'm going to take a stencil this could be something you've made yourself. I roll or, uh, or brayer the, the, the stencil flat down onto the, the plate. This gives me a good adhesion. And then using some butcher paper or a thin paper that doesn't have any um, lint on it, just place that over the plate and rub away the ink or the paint in between the areas where the stencil is. So you want to remove that from the, the plate and the area where the plastic of the stencil is covering is actually going to have ink underneath there. You can keep that piece of paper and use it for some other projects as well. It normally takes a couple of pieces of paper in order to clean the plate completely. You should be able to see through the plate at this point. Now you peel off the stencil and there is the design. And because the plate is transparent, it makes it very easy to align it with uh, the design below. So that's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to align it with the previous print that you just made using the texture. And it's always best to flip the plate back onto um, its back if you will and have the paper on top and use the heel of your hand again to apply pressure or the palm of your hand to apply pressure and that will lift the paint off and give you your registration and alignment print. You can do this several times. and build up different colours as you go. The pick-up techniques are really neat technique. It's one of those techniques that you kind of have to maybe practice a little bit to get it uh, just right or to be predictable with it. But it really is reliant on having whatever residual paint is left that's dry on the plate. Um, you can then apply another thin coat of paint over that, place paper down on top of it and peel the whole thing off, giving you extra texture or maybe a transfer or something similar. So in this particular example, I'm using some of the techniques I used in the last um, example. It's removing colour extracting colour from the plate. I'm going to leave the stencil down on the plate as it stands and then roll it another colour across the top. You could choose a contrasting or complementary colour. I'm using green and yellow here.
And the more you work with this, the more interesting it becomes. So I'm going to go back in and either you can draw or pull or subtract paint um, using something like a plastic palette knife. Be careful with anything that you use to draw onto the plate that it's not sharp because the plates are soft and um, mark easily and can damage. Uh, taking the same technique when I'm going to remove some of the paint through the stencil. That leaves a sort of ghost image and you can just use butcher paper and you can reuse the butcher paper and it also produces some kind of interesting collage papers afterwards. To leave this to dry and then apply a thin coating and I'm using multiple colours there because I like that um, sort of inconsistent you can use a, a single colour if you want but the most important thing is that it should be a thin layer and you should be able to see the existing image on the plate through that layer and you can always clean off the brayer if you've got too much paint on the, um, the plate. Using the Ecoline print paper again, use the palm or heel of your hand, flatten it down, give lots of pressure on it, then gradually just peel back the corner and you want to do this immediately because you don't want the paper to stick to the actual plate and as you can see as I start to pull back the paper it's cleaning off the entire plate so it's given me quite an interesting layer uh, multi layers of, of paint there and there's another example kind of ghost image of um, the stencil that was used in the first project so the distress transfer technique is somewhat similar to the pickup print you're going to actually use glossy magazine paper for this. Um, don't bother cleaning your plate. Sometimes some of that, as I said, that residual paint that's on there can lead to some interesting results. And um, kind of working with a dirty plate with some of these techniques is not a bad thing. So I used a, a book that I had which had some high contrast glossy images. And you need to test the paper because not all of these prints will transfer. So you're going to take a dark colour, I used half of the plate so it left me the other half to work on. I placed the print or the image print side down and then I put some more paint onto the exposed part of the plate. And again I'm going to remove some of the colour using the same technique which is the butcher paper and the stencil. This gives a very distressed, sort of grungy kind of look, which uh, can be quite interesting. Carefully pull the transfer back and you'll see that part of the image there is transferred onto the plate. Now what we have to do is to get that to release onto a sheet of paper. I'm going to use some polymer medium here um, in this particular example. And just be careful that you don't smudge the image underneath. You want a fairly thin layer. Again, using the Ecoline print paper, press down very firmly with the heel of your hand and you can take a look at the side of the paper before you fully pull it off. As you can see, it's released some of the image on there, which has given a sort of distressed look. These were images from the 1920s to 1950s, modernist graphics. In this particular one, I'm going to do the same technique, um, but we're going to use white paint in order to release the image. This is a great use for old magazines, etc., that students can bring in to the class and, and create uh, some prints using them. Again, I'm just applying the same 
technique, addition, subtraction, to give me a, a distressed look. Now I'm going to put white acrylic on there. Again, you don't want to put a lot on there. You want a very fine application. Carefully brayer the colour out onto the plate. Do the same thing. Press down firmly and pull back and you should get almost a complete release. And you can see some of the the detailed image of the, the graphic there on the right hand side of the of the print. Add some paint onto the surface of the plate and using your brayer, roll the colour until it is flat and evenly distributed. Here the ink has first been rolled onto an additional plate. This is an optional application for the first step. When the paint is still wet, place the plant samples onto the wet surface. Roll out a different shade or colour on a flat surface or onto an additional plate. Brayer the colour over the plant fibres and plate as shown. Remove the material from the plate and place a sheet of paper onto the mono plate. The paint must still be wet. Smooth paper is best for this technique. Royal Talon's Ecoline print paper has been used in this example. Smooth the paper and apply a firm, even pressure using the heel of your hand. Peel the paper back to reveal the exquisite detail that can be captured using this printing method. Experiment with transparent and opaque colours. In the second print, opaque metallic colours were used and printed onto Van Gogh black watercolour paper. Polychromatic means many colour. When you use this in a mono uh, printing technique with a water soluble colour like Ecoline, which is dye based, gives you a really interesting result. Coat the plate with a clear gesso. This gives a tooth that will then accept the colour and allow you to get a reasonable amount of detail. Don't worry about it, the gesso can be removed. I'm using the Ecoline markers. Um, these were introduced in 2016. Um, Ecoline's been around since about 1930s. And you can dilute the actual colour down quite a fair bit because it's so concentrated. In fact, you really kind of want to do that because if it's too concentrated when it prints, you can actually end up with sort of overwhelming result. So you're really working into this. I mean, if you work wet into wet, you get a very, very loose image. If you work wet and then let it dry and then come in carefully you can get more detail and more accurate um, sort of imagery. I like the looseness of this, um, the immediate sort of um, impressionistic if you will kind of effect with it. It's a little different to the typical mono printing technique which is quite sort of graphic and um, this is more sort of watercolor more watercolor like as you can see here I've, I'm sort of working in and I'm re-dissolving and I'm going back in and wiping around until I get something that I am happy with and with the pair um, I would leave this to dry and then come back in with the black or a, a darker color pen to give detail I'm going to print onto the um, Talons Art Creation mixed media paper. It's a really good, robust paper, and I'm using 
the clear gesso you can either roller this on or you can brush it on or you can also apply it using a palette knife. When it's still wet you want to take the plate and then place it down into the area. Um, if you want a really neat edge tape the edge of the plate area off so that you don't end up with gesso there. Then flip it over and apply the pressure onto the back of the plate through the paper. That's always the best way to print. And then you'll get a print. And it will have the creases of the plate, etc. You can come back in here with a damp brush, work with it and um, smooth out areas or add more colour if you want so it's it, it can be adapted. It's quite nice to be able to have that couple of different steps that you can take with the monoprint and then come back in and work back into it and because the Ecoline is water soluble, because it's dye based, it's infinitely um, soluble in water. You can also get multiple prints or uh, multiple copies off of one plate. As a bonus application, I'm going to talk about doing the polychromatic technique using a screen. So you want to paint onto the silk screen. That's the print side, which is the side that touches the paper. I'm going to use the Ecoline markers, which work beautifully on the fabric. They don't snag or drag. Got nice fine points and you can shade them and uh, get some nice detail with them. They blend beautifully, there is a blender that's available. You can use a little water if you want to on a brush but they are so water soluble that it will tend to bleed if you do that. So again this technique suits itself to things which are a bit more impressionistic, a little less um, detailed, a looser effect. You can go in there, as I said, and just blend. Uh, the colours work beautifully. The mesh on most of these screens is polyester monofilament or uh, multifilament, so this colour will just wash off when you're finished. Once you've got your design um, already created there, what you're going to do is we'll use the Talons Art Creation multimedia paper or mixed media paper. You can just place your screen down if you want to get a nice clean edge, tape it off. We're going to use acrylic medium. You can use matte or uh, gloss depending on which effect you want. Because that's water soluble, it's going to dissolve the dye on the screen. You just want a little bit, you don't need too much. And then just use a squeegee, a scraper, one pull. As you can see, it does bleed it a little bit out there. So maybe white tape would be a good idea or a mask. And you can get multiple prints with it. Each print will get consecutively lighter as you pull the acrylic through the, through the screen and release the dye. For a quick product recap on what we've been using in these various projects. Amsterdam Standard is a medium viscosity, 100% acrylic emulsion and high grade pigments. It has excellent adhesion on most surfaces and with excellent light fastness. There's a wide range of opacities including 17 speciality metallic, pearl and reflex colours. Ecoline is a water soluble dye based liquid watercolour. It's available in 60 colours and is available in bottles and brush pens. Ecoline print paper can be printed and scanned. It's available in A4 size 
and 150 grams. It's excellent for monoprinting. It has a smooth finish and can be reworked on top with Ecoline paints and brush markers. Talon's Art Creation is perfect mixed media paper. It's available in 30 sheet block of A3 size, ring bound, 250 grams. Thank you.